I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You want to borrow the new car? You want to borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy. Super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey! Hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Whoa! Money really does grow on trees. Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for June 21st, 2020. So glad that you have chosen to worship with us today, and it is always a blessing to lift up the Lord's name in praise, to pray, and to gather together, even if we aren't in each other's physical presence, we are together in heart, in mind, and in spirit. So let us open our hearts, prepare ourselves to worship God and to know that our brothers and sisters in Christ from our congregation and also from all the congregations around the world that love and praise Jesus. We are all one in our worship today and forevermore. I'd like to uh, remind you that giving is available at hannahumc.org or by texting your gift to 219-217-1046. Thank you so much for your generosity, and especially as we begin to look toward resuming in-person worship in the near future, um, those gifts will enable us to focus our ministry and to carry the good news of Jesus Christ into the world through our missions, through our ministries, through our very lives and selves. It's my prayer that as a result of this unusual time, we might have come to appreciate how much importance there is in being a gathered community. And if we do value how much we mean to each other. And if we understand how much our Lord values us, that he sent his son to give his life for us, then we now more than ever might see how important it is to share that good news with people throughout our community and the land, inviting them to be not just an attender of our church, but to be a member of the family of God, where they can encounter the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God our Father, and have their lives transformed to be full of hope, to be full of mercy, and to be full of love. This was what Jesus talked about throughout his life. This is why he gathered the church. 
let us take the tragic situation and give it to God for all things work together for good for those who believe. Let us believe. And I want to wish all of the fathers in our church a very happy Father's Day. And indeed, for all the men in our church, because whether you're like me and never had the blessing of becoming a father, we still act in our community as fathers, leading, loving, guiding, nurturing, encouraging, supporting, occasionally needing to correct. The love of a father is indeed a great gift from God. And I thank all of you fathers and all of you men who have lived your lives in a way that both guides, gives stability and comfort, provides for and corrects those that God has brought into your life, whether as your natural children or simply as being a member of the community. In honor of Father's Day, we have a Father's Day prayer. Please pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, bless the fathers who are on earth, those who work hard every day to light a path and show the way, those who forget and don't perceive the devastation when they leave. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help the earthly fathers know and praise your name in daily flow, making no difference between the holy realm and worldly scene. Give us this day our daily bread, and for the dads without a job, strengthen their faith and provider God. Feed them with the bread of love, the wine of justice, the meat of determination, the fruit of the Spirit, that they will remember how Jesus gave himself for us, demonstrating that there are many ways for a man to give. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Teach our men the ways of peace, desiring that all violence shall cease, whether husband, wife, parents, children, black on black, nation to nation, neither tongue, hand, gun, knife, no shock and awe, no fiery towers. Help humanity learn how to forgive. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Guide all dead and wise. Give them strength of soul to seek the prize of a world without racism or greed. A world where no child is left in need. A world where cheaters cannot win. Salvation reigns. There is no sin. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And to all the men, to all the fathers, and to all the women and children who love them, we give God thanks and praise. For God is our Father, and the calling of a father is to reflect the love, the mercy, the grace, and the guidance of our Heavenly Father. A high calling indeed. We honor you. Hear these words of encouragement from John's first letter to the church, 1 John 5, 13 to 15. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. John's wise words about the Father hearing us and giving us whatever we ask, if it's according to his will. We have the grace, the goodness of God, that God does not give us bad gifts, 
even when we ask for them. So let us ask for the good gifts, for the fruit of the Spirit. Let us ask for the love in our hearts to love God, to love our neighbor, for all of the law and the prophets, according to Jesus, boil down to love God and love neighbor. That is God's will. So let us ask, according to his will, that the love of God and the love of neighbor might rule throughout our world, that all of the brokenness might be made whole through God's love in Jesus Christ. Be confident that when we ask according to his will, he will give us what we ask. It is a glorious, a wonderful privilege to be able to ask our Father. And it is a beautiful, beautiful miracle that we can have the assurance that God wants these good things more than we ever will. So let us listen to God, hear the words of John, and pray for all the good things that God wants for us, for our church, our community, and for the world that God created to glorify him. Let us now open our worship with a word of prayer. Hear us now, Father. We gather to worship you, to remember our brothers and sisters of this household, your household, that we miss dearly. We pray that you restore and renew us. We pray that you bring us back together again soon and safely. We pray, Lord, that this time where we have been apart might be used by you to be a blessing to us and to others, not just to keep us and each other safe from this illness that is spreading throughout the world, but to renew in us our commitment to your family, the church, to renew in us our love for one another, to renew in us our desire to go into the world, to bring healing, to bring hope, to bring the love of Jesus Christ to every person, no matter how broken, no matter how far from you they may appear to us. They are as close to you as saying, I believe. Lord, help us to live in a way that our lives might show that we too believe. And as we worship you today, may this be just the beginning of our worship this week, that as we end this worship in a few minutes that we might go into the world continuing to worship you with our lives, with our words, with our actions, all for the glory of your son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again for all of us. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us now join together in saying our opening hymn. Open my eyes that I may see.
As we gather now to pray for the concerns and the needs that are on our hearts, that are in the lives of our friends and family, in our community and in our world, let us remember especially this week, Don, Sandy, Susie, Cliff, Bill, and Roger. May God's spirit be with them. May our prayers surround them so that in their time of illness and recuperation, they might know God's presence. They might know that our hearts are with theirs. Let us pray. Good and glorious God, you hear the very whispers of our hearts. You hear what we say out loud, and you hear what we are afraid to say out loud. But you hear all that is within us. We thank you, Lord, that you were so attentive to our needs. We thank you, Lord, that you care enough for us, your creation, that you listen to us, that you hear us. We thank you, Lord, that you forgive us for those times when we do not hear you, for those times when we just cease listening to you and to each other and to the cries of a hurting and broken world. We pray, Lord, that you hear us now as we ask for your forgiveness. And we pray, Lord, that you hear within us the true desire of our hearts, for your kingdom to rule on this earth. Help us, Lord, to be workers to bring that kingdom about, to be your missionaries in the world. Help us, Lord, to spread your love that all the world might be healed, that those who are sick might be made whole, that those who worry might have trust in your care that those who are wayward might find the path, that those who are lost might be found, and that those are so sure, those who are so sure, that they know exactly what is right for themselves and for everybody, might hear the gentle call of the shepherd to come into the fold and let the shepherd worry about the other sheep. We thank you, Lord, that you have sent us a shepherd. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of summer. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of fathers. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, that when our fathers fall short, as we all fall short, that your grace forgives all, that your Holy Spirit sustains, corrects, renews, uplifts, guides all of us. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice. Help us, Lord, to hear one another. Put aside our assumptions and put aside our biases that the only assumption and bias that we need is that you love all people and that you call us to show that love in the world. We know, Lord, that we cannot do this without your sustaining spirit. We know that we cannot have any hope at all aside from Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. May our own lives be resurrected into full life, into the fullness of life in the spirit. May our hearts be strangely warmed And may our compassion grow as great as yours. We know, Lord, that it is only through Jesus Christ that we dare to hope for any of this. And so we gather our voices together to pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord from the 10th chapter of Matthew, verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Help us, Lord, in this time to hear the message that you have for us. And help us, Lord, to live that message in the world, all for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So, boy, what a great scripture for Father's Day that talks about domestic strife between a father and a mother and their children, the in-laws. <sighs> happy, happy Father's Day stuff, right? But we have to understand what Jesus is saying in this passage. Jesus talks about what you hear whispered in your ear. Proclaim it out loud. So what is it that people hear? He's not talking about betraying confidences. He's not talking about gossip. The thing that is whispered is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came to earth as a man born as a baby, lived and walked on this earth, and who gave his life for our sake, but then was raised from the dead. When we hear that, we are to proclaim it loudly. We are to tell the whole world that we believe in Jesus Christ. But the truth is, from the time that Matthew wrote this, until today, a lot of people don't want to hear that. And that's what causes this strife in the family. That even those closest to us will not accept the role that Jesus Christ has in our lives. And be really clear, Jesus says through this passage, that if you love your father or mother more than me, you're not worthy. If you love your children more than me, you are not worthy. If you love your own life more than me, you are not worthy. Now, I want to be clear. There's not a one of us who is worthy. 
We rely solely on the grace of God in Jesus Christ to reconcile us with God. But if we want to honor what Jesus has done for us, if we want to live in Christ, then we must love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit more than anything else. But it isn't a competition. It's not an either or. Because the best way that we can love our family, our friends, the best way that we can love our life is to give our lives to Christ so that they might see, so that they might know, so that they might hear the good news. Now, for those of you that, have, uh, that attend the discipleship classes, you'll no doubt recognize this story because I tell it from time to time. It's a historical story about a young, uh, wealthy woman in Carthage in the uh, third century. And she had gotten married. She was expecting a child. And she accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And when this was discovered, because she didn't just whisper it, she was arrested and thrown in prison. Now, her father was a very prominent man in Carthage. And he so desperately wanted to save his daughter and to save her unborn child that he pleaded with her to do as the magistrates and the officials required because she could be set free if she just renounced Jesus. Her name was Perpetua. And Perpetua loved Jesus more than she loved her father. So she refused to denounce Jesus. Day after day, her father and her husband would come and plead with her for their sake to renounce Jesus. Perpetua would not. Finally, Perpetua gave birth and her baby daughter was taken away from her because her father thought, Surely she would love her daughter more than this Jesus, and she would renounce Jesus so that she could come home and be with and care for her daughter. But Perpetua would not renounce Jesus. So finally they decided, well, maybe if we give the baby back to her in prison, she would see what she's missing and what the baby would be missing. And maybe then she would deny Jesus Christ. But she did not. Finally, she'd been given all the time that the officials were going to give her. And she was sent into the arena to be slaughtered by wild animals. Now, there's more to the story, some miracles there. But the key point is, Perpetua willingly went into the arena to give her own life rather than renounce her belief in Jesus Christ. She loved Jesus more than her own life. Perpetua is actually a saint in the Roman and Orthodox churches. She's remembered and revered for living out this passage from Matthew because she loved Jesus more than father, more than husband, more than child, more than life itself. And Perpetua was indeed put to death for her faith. But through that, throughout the centuries, people have been inspired. They've been given hope. They have held fast to their hope in their faith in Jesus Christ because of the witness of Perpetua. But her father, her husband, and perhaps later her child, though legend has it that her child also was a Christian because of her mother's witness. But they didn't understand what Perpetua was saying. They didn't understand why she loved this Jesus more than them. I'm sure that hurt, because we're all hurt when those that we love don't love us as much or the way that we think they should. And it's really hard to understand each other. It's hard to understand why people do what they do. 
It's hard for the world to understand why a Christian has faith. It's hard for the Christian to understand why those who don't accept Christ don't. But we're sent into the world to be witnesses, to tell the world, to proclaim it from the rooftops that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ lives again, that Jesus Christ dwells in our hearts. But when we go to proclaim this, how will they hear us? And it's really important that we understand how to talk to people, how to share with them. And before we can tell them, or at least before they will hear us, we need to hear them, hear where they're coming from, hear their stories, so that we can hear what matters to them. We can hear where their hopes and their dreams are. We can hear their fears. I am convinced that in each and every person, there is in their secret inner core the desire for God. Because each and every person was created in the image of God. And if that image could just come alive, could come out, they would know. They would know the joy of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But there's all sorts of life experience and sin and biases and assumptions that stand in the way of them knowing Jesus. And our task as missionaries is to get beyond all of that stuff, to find that holy core in each and every person and help it to come to the surface. But it's really hard to hear other people's stories and really understand. It's so almost an impossible task to actually understand what somebody needs to hear to accept Jesus Christ. When I was in seminary, they, they beat into your head and your heart the importance of the assumptions that we make when we make sense and meaning of the world around us and of each other. To illustrate this, they gave us an assignment called the empathy assignment. In that assignment, we were paired up um, we were paired with somebody who was different from ourselves, as different as possible. Um, if you were male, preferably you were paired with a female. If you were white, you were preferably paired with somebody from another race. So in my case, I was paired up with a young African-American male from the south side of Chicago. And... In the assignments, we were to interview each other for one hour each, asking about their life, their experience of life, how they grew up, trying to get a sense of who they are. And then, after we each interviewed one another for an hour, we had to write a paper as if we were the other person that was basically, who am I? So, I don't actually remember the young man's name that I was paired with, I think it was Ben. So I wrote a paper, Who Am I, as if I were Ben, trying to describe in writing what I understood Ben to know and think and feel about himself. And he did the same writing as if he were me. And then we traded papers and read what the other thought, and then we were to comment on writing and give that back. Now, when I was interviewing and listening to Ben, I tried really hard to hear who Ben is. I listened with what I thought was empathy, and I listened and wrote with compassion. But when I got the paper back from Ben, where he commented on what I wrote, it was clear that Ben was kind of insulted by who I thought he was. I tried to be as kind and compassionate as I could be. But after spending an hour asking probing questions of Ben, who I thought Ben was, was 
It's not who Ben was telling me he was. The final part of the assignment where we got graded was we then had to write our response and what we learned from the exercise. Well, what I learned was how very difficult it is to actually hear somebody else, to actually understand who they are. Even when we're using all of the empathy and compassion that we can muster, it's still so easy to misunderstand. So I apologize to Ben. I will say Ben and I did not become friends, nor was there animosity. But it's an illustration of how much work it takes to actually hear the people around us, to hear their needs, to hear what drives them, what motivates them, to hear what God has placed in their hearts. It's especially hard to hear what God has placed in somebody's heart when it is encrusted with all sorts of muck and mire from life. The hurts, the scars, the biases, the sins. But underneath all of that is that beautiful and precious, perfect person that God caused to exist. And it is that person that we're trying to reach. It is that person within ourselves that we're trying to let free. Before we go proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, we have to let the people in the world whisper in our ear or proclaim it from the rooftops who they are. And we have to, with empathy and compassion, hear them as Jesus heard all of those people that he talked with and ate with and walked with when he was on this earth. Because Jesus saw the truth of the people he encountered. And sometimes in seeing that truth, the people walked away sad. Sometimes they rejected him. Ultimately, they crucified him for his truth. But some believed. Some were transformed. Some had that inner being that God created come out and live its life. Peter, who was so impetuous. Paul, who was such a persecutor. Mary Magdalene became a changed woman. Everybody who accepted Jesus Christ was a new creation. But really, they were an old creation. They were what they were created to be in the beginning. Still not perfected, still having to grow and learn and become more Christ-like. But as long as they loved Jesus, more than anything else, more than their families, more than their children, more than their own lives, they continued to grow. And they became such powerful witnesses because of the transformation that they had made. Paul's preaching and teaching and writing is so powerful because of the persecution Paul had been committing against the Christians. Peter's witness is so strong because he failed to get it while he was with Jesus. All disciples, our witness comes out of not our own goodness, but out of Jesus' goodness. Not out of our great and powerful faith that we believe, but out of the fact that in spite of our unbelief, we know Jesus Christ. We need to hear both what the world is telling us, what the individuals in the world are telling us, especially those that we have the most social distance with. Hear them. Listen to them. But at the same time, hear what the Spirit is whispering in our ear. And proclaim out loud 
to those people that we're listening to that they were created by God, that Jesus Christ gave his life for them, and that Jesus loves them, and we seek to love them enough to lay down our lives as Jesus laid down his life, that they might have life. And in that, our lives can be worthy of him. Amen. To live the call this week. Remember the words of John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But to save the world through him. This week's living the call may be one of the most difficult. Think this week about who you do not love. An individual, a group of people, a group of people you don't understand, a group of people that you think are just so wrong. And it doesn't matter whether or not they are wrong. But if you feel animosity in your heart, if you feel that they need to be dealt with, ask God to whisper in your ear why God gave his son Jesus Christ for them. And ask God to guide you in how you can hear what is needed to reach them for Jesus Christ. He sent his son because we are all broken. And not to condemn any of us, but that all of us might have life abundant in Jesus Christ. We are his missionaries. Let us hear God. Let us hear them. And let us proclaim from the rooftop God's love for all people. And let us now proclaim in our living rooms or wherever we're watching this as we sing our final hymn, Lord, Speak to Me. In some ways, perhaps it was easier for Perpetua. Of course, that's ridiculous. What a horrible thing for her to go through. But the hard thing is the mundane. The difficult thing is the day-to-day -day life filled with all of the things that we have accumulated in our own minds and hearts. 
all of those things that compete with our love for Jesus, for our attention, for our effort, compete for our hearts. I pray that each and every one of us, myself included, will open our hearts up to Jesus so that we can love each other and the world as much as we hope to love Jesus. And if it be God's will, that we might love as much as Jesus loves. It's a challenge. It's hard. And we will fall short. But go into the world, even knowing that we will fall short. And follow the example of Christ. The example of Perpetua. And hear, listen, love Jesus more than anything else, more than father or mother, more than child, more than life, more than all of our opinions, more than all of our thoughts, more than all of our beliefs. Just listen to Jesus. And in listening to Jesus, hear the world calling out for a savior, even if they don't realize that's what they're asking for. So go into the world this week confident that when our hearts are open to Jesus, they're open to the world. There can be no other way. And this is how God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit sends us to have open hearts and open ears and open eyes. Amen.